What's going on guys, Matt Sheldon here from Become Elite and today I wanna to cover seven training items that I regret purchasing. I've been playing football now for 25 years, professionally for like eight years or so, and I have bought a lot of items to try to help out my career. Some of them have been fantastic, some of them have been okay, and there's some that I've, I've literally used once and never again. So in this video, I wanna cover that last category, the items that I definitely do not think are worth the money. The first item that I regret purchasing is the Skills Goal Shot Shooting Net. It comes in at a whopping $325, and honestly, I think the only real benefit is to try to teach people to aim for the corners. If I'm being 100% transparent here, I actually didn't shell out the $325 for this item. I was actually given it for free. I brought it in my car. It takes up a decent amount of space in my car. I brought it out to the field. It took five, 10 minutes to set up, which isn't too bad. But then in the session, I kind of just was like, yeah, it's, it's telling me to aim for the corners. I already know to aim for the corners. And then once I finished the session I had to then bring it all down pack it all up put it back in my car and I never used it again in my opinion when I'm out of the field training and off season or something and I don't have a goalkeeper and I'm just shooting on an empty net I kind of already know if the shot that I hit is a good shot or not regardless if there's a net telling me to aim for the corners ah Just based off how I hit that shot, I know if that's a good or bad shot. Now I have talked to professional level coaches, trainers, and players that love it. They love having that visual target to aim for. They think it makes for a more professional setting. But for me, I'd be happy if someone paid for it, set it up for me, and took it down. But for me, I don't think it's worth the money. I don't think it's worth the time. And I don't even think it's really worth the space in my car. The second training item that I regret purchasing is the hand massage roller stick type thing. The price for these things ranges a ton, but you can find a really cheap model on Amazon for like like seven bucks, or you can go for the brand name, more expensive version for like 50. Now with this, I definitely think it's a useful tool. It's great for self myofascial release. It's just like foam rolling to get into muscles to loosen tight areas. And I do like it, but I like foam rolling way, way more. That stick requires two hands to, how do I say that? <laughs> this massage tool requires the use of both hands and you can really only comfortably kind of hit your calves and your quads. For me, hitting the hamstrings, the groins, the glutes, the lower back, and even kind of parts of the upper body just wasn't practical with it. And a foam roller I felt was way, way more practical. And it also allowed me to use my entire body weight on that foam roller to get a much, much more deeper release. The third item that I regret purchasing is a GPS tracker and vest. The price for these things range anywhere from like 150 bucks up to $300. And for me, purchasing for my own individual training or just for myself just isn't worth it. I know I'm gonna get a ton of hate, a ton of people disagreeing with me in the comment section, but hear me out. I I think these vests that track your heart rate, your distance covered, your top speed, all those metrics, I think are fantastic in a team setting. When you can compare yourself every single day to your teammates, especially when you have a sports scientist there to look at all the numbers and to manage your workloads throughout the week and help prepare you to feel your best in the games. I also think it's fantastic to compare yourself to other fullbacks in your team or other fullbacks in the league or other people in your position and just see how you're moving compared to them. I think that's great. But to buy one for yourself with no one really else to compare it to, I just don't think that's worth it. And if I'm being transparent again, I actually haven't even shelled out the money for these GPS vests. I've been given one free from player and I think I've been given one free from Stat Sports and then obviously all of my professional teams use them and I get to use them for free. But even when I've been given those vests for free, I try them out once or twice. I go, wow, that's kind of cool. You know, I get to see that kind of stuff. And then I don't think it's worth it to bring it along for the rest of my sessions. And I also think the apps from Stat Sports and the apps from Player and Catapult and all that stuff are great to break down the numbers that they give you and they provide tons of cool graphs and metrics and all this stuff that's great to look at. But I really think you need a qualified sports scientist or a trainer or a physiotherapist or, or whoever to look at your numbers day in, day out, compare it to other teams in the league, to other teams in different leagues, to really help you prepare your body to let you know what's too much, what's too little. Can we make a push here? Should we need, do we need to tailor back a little bit to best prepare you for the games. And lastly, I think these vests can also give you kind of a false view 
of what makes a good session or a bad session or a good game versus a bad game. Just because your numbers are really high doesn't always really mean that that was a great session that you're gonna benefit a ton as a footballer. And the same with a game, just because you sprinted more or you ran further in that game doesn't always mean it was a better game. Some of the best off-season training sessions that I do, I really don't move around a ton. I'm doing tight space rondos, I'm doing really good passing patterns, I'm working on my technique for finishing, long balls, crossing, but I'm really not putting in a ton of work accelerating and decelerating or running tons of miles without stopping or or whatever likewise in a game i've actually even noticed that usl players tend to cover more distance in games than premier league players just because typically we turn over the ball more we don't have the quality to keep the ball for longer periods of time so that leads to more turnovers more counter attacks and a, a sloppier more physical game while at higher levels they can keep and retain the ball more and it's usually played more with your brain so yes i do think the gps vests are worth it in the team setting when they're used by the right people to help in the right ways but i also think that they can have a negative effect if you take those numbers a little bit too seriously the fourth thing that i regret purchasing is actually three things in one but i regret purchasing expensive shin guards, expensive shin guard stays, and expensive shin guard sleeves. This is a huge category, but the prices between these range from like five bucks to 95 bucks. But honestly, I've regretted purchasing everything. I've tried out everything to keep my shin pads secure, in a good spot, comfortable, and so that they don't get in the way while I play. And the best, the best method that I found is getting a cheap, thin plastic Nike J guard for like 12, 15 bucks on Amazon, even like a buck if you wanna go with the off-brand ones. And then just using pre-wrap to wrap around your leg and secure in that shin guard right at your shin. It's one of the cheapest methods that you can probably find out there, but it is 100% the best. And from talking to other pros and just even watching other pros, I think majority of them do the same exact thing. They get a cheap, small shin pad shin guard and they use maybe a little bit of pre-wrap or they just shove it in another sock and that's what they do. The fifth training item that I regret purchasing is any cones that aren't mini disc cones. Cones are pretty cheap, so it's not that huge of a deal, but in my experience, the best cones to train with are the mini disc cones. The absolute worst are the classic, you know, pointy tall cones that are like a foot tall because any little breeze, even knocking them over a little bit, they tip over. And every single time you're trying to do a set of like a tight passing pattern or a rondo, they're too bulky, they're gonna get in the way. And just overall, I think that it's a annoying constantly having to pick those things up because of how top heavy they are. The larger disc cones are decent. I like those, I've used those a ton, but when you're doing a lot of tight technical passing work or a rondo, they do get in the way a ton. And it's very frustrating when you're at 15, 16 passes in the rondo and you do a great pass to your teammate, he's right behind the cone, it knocks off the cone, and then there you go, you can't get to 20 and you can't keep those two bozos in the center in for another round. The next best cones are the flat disc cones. Those are decent, I like those especially for rondos and passing patterns because if the ball goes right over it, it's not gonna disrupt your pass at all and it's great. But the only problem is if you're doing longer range passing patterns or you're trying to mark out a goal or something, those can be hard to see if you're not five, 10 yards away from it. So those are okay, I like to use them, but honestly the best are those mini disc cones because they're tiny, they don't get in the way that much. Even if a ball hits them, sometimes they don't disrupt your pass that much. They're hard to tip over and yet you can still see them from you know, 20, 30, 30 yards. Every time in off season when I'm training, I always go and grab those mini disc cones for pretty much every single drill. The sixth training item that I regret purchasing is an expensive vibrating heated foam roller or massage ball. Again, these range in price from like 30 bucks up to a whopping $200. And for me, it's just not worth it at all. I think the heated version is kind of worthless because whenever you're actually doing a, a serious foam rolling session, you know it's actually kind of a strenuous workout. So you begin kind of sweating and, and getting the body temperature up despite the heated feature on the foam roller. And the vibrating feature, some players really do like it, and I know players that swear by it, but for me, it's like, yeah, it's okay. It doesn't help me get any deeper into the muscle, and I don't feel any more relaxed. I'd rather have a massage gun to really have that percussion therapy, or I'd rather just have a foam roller to get in deep with myofascial release. So the vibrating feature, again, is kind of gimmicky for me. The seventh training item that I regret purchasing is cheaper, lower tiered, less expensive footballs. Now this is kind of backwards. In pretty much every other category, I've been saying it's not worth it to buy the expensive version and it's better just to go with the cheaper version. This is where I completely flip that around and I disagree and I think that when it comes to balls, go with the expensive balls. And the reason for this is because whenever I found myself having a 
bag of balls and there's a mismatched variety of them. Like I have like three match balls, I have like four $80 training balls, and then I have like three $40 like cheaper training balls. I usually go out to the field and I pretty much only train with the match balls. Even if I'm doing something like a shooting session or whatever, I kind of hit the match balls, I might hit the $80 training balls, and then I look at the $40 balls that I have right next to me and I go, you know what, now nah, I'm gonna go chase after the match balls again. Or when I'm with a group of guys, we're doing a rondo, Many times players will just run by the cheaper $40 balls and run the extra 10 yards to collect that match ball, come back in and train again. So in my opinion, instead of having like 15 $40 balls, I'd rather have like four or five match grade balls. And I don't want to shame anybody for training with the $40 match grade balls or even the $10 soccer ball that you can get from Walmart or anything because you can still train, you can still improve with that. But if I'm investing in my career, that's where I'm going to splurge. That's where I'm going to spend the money. And before I buy the $300, $125 skill zone gold net or before I spend tons of money on a GPS tracking vest or before I buy a vibrating heated foam roller I'm saving up my money and I'm buying 10 match grade soccer balls it might not be sexy it might not be cool but that's where I think players should invest their money in anyway guys that is seven items that I regret purchasing or items that I've been given for free and I definitely wouldn't purchase in the first place let me know your thoughts though let me know if you disagree let me know if you said Matt all on the money, perfect, you're the best. Or if you're saying no, you're the dumbest person alive, all this stuff is great. Just let me know. I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, peace.